Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Jack Trenton. Wow. Thanks for uh, coming out, everybody. Uh, I can't tell you how much fun we've had over the last several months putting together this press conference, and especially the brief 12-hour rehearsal yesterday where everything went perfectly smooth. <laughs> I can't tell you that because the truth is this is the most stressful event you could ever imagine. It takes about two years off of my life, but I'm more than, sacrifice, more than happy to sacrifice my health if you leave here a little bit more entertained and informed. So on behalf of everybody at Sony Computer Entertainment America, I want to welcome you to the historic Shrine Auditorium. Over the past 80 years, this room has played host to some of the biggest events in the entertainment industry. On this very stage, Kiefer Sutherland won an award for playing Jack Bauer. And Tom Hanks won an award for playing Forrest Gump. And Jack Palance did five or six one-arm push-ups while Billy Crystal looked on in fear. <laughs> and thanks to this job and my biannual workout regimen, uh, there's not much chance you seeing that happen uh, today. <laughs> but I believe Jack Palance is dead and I'm still here, so... Uh, <laughs> I hope that you'll see here today it will be enough to get your blood pumping. To a Shrine Auditorium roster that includes Robert De Niro, Julia Roberts, and Jack Nicholson, today we add the names Solid Snake, Nathan Hale, Kratos, and Sackboy. <laughs> From this very stage today, you're going to hear about a PlayStation brand that's really hitting its stride. With three great platforms, a flood of new content, a ton of great upgrades and services, and a lineup that features the biggest exclusives in the industry. As many of you have already written, 2008 is the year of the PS3. But as great as 2008 has been, we're just getting started. The truth is, we've just begun to scratch the surface of what we intend to deliver for consumers in the months and years ahead. The seeds for the PlayStation brand were laid exactly 15 years ago this week. It was July 20th, 1993 that executives at Sony came together to make a final decision to give a red light or a green light about whether the company should create its own video game console. As the world's premier technology and entertainment company, we believed that we could engineer and deliver a gaming experience to consumers that was second to none. Something that was more intense, more vivid, and more powerful than anything they'd ever seen before. From the very beginning, our customers came to expect something different from us because we expected something different from ourselves. PlayStation ushered in CD technology to millions of households worldwide, just as the PS2 introduced DVD technology to the mass market. Because what really made Sony Computer Entertainment different from the very beginning is that we took a longer look ahead. At a time when most of the product life cycles in the gaming industry were three to five years, we committed ourselves to a 10-year vision, and then we executed against it. But two years into the original PlayStation, at about the same point in time where we are here today in the PS3 timeline, Crash Bandicoot was here, and so was Tekken, but Gran Turismo was a year away. Final Fantasy VII was a year away. Grand Theft Auto was two years away, and Tony Hawk was three years away. And through it all, PlayStation went on to become the first video game console to move over 100 million units. And again on PlayStation 2, blockbusters like Final Fantasy X, Eco, and Grand Theft Auto 3 were in place in the first few years. But Grand Theft Auto San Andreas came along in year four, and God of War Guitar Hero and Shadows of the Colossus came out in year five. God of War was introduced in year seven, and while blockbuster titles keep coming, it took some time for mass migration from PlayStation to PlayStation 2. Why do I mention all this? Well, two years ago, we put together another 10-year vision when we launched the PlayStation 3. With PlayStation 3, we created a high-definition experience for every gamer and entertainment enthusiast out there by making Blu-ray standard on every console we sell. PS3 drove the Blu-ray format to victory, and now the Blu-ray format is poised to return the favor. We created the cell processor, so powerful 
that not only does it drive the PS3, but IBM is actually using the cell processor to power the new, its newest supercomputer. This comes on the heels of a PS3-fueled Guinness World Record set last fall by Stanford University's Folding at Home project, a distributed computing system that helps scientists study the effects of a process called protein folding. It was enabled in large part by more than 1.7 million PS3 users worldwide who have signed up to be a part of the project and help make it the world's most powerful distributed computing system. And at a time when gamers and consumers are leaving the PC behind and moving content into the living room, we created a console in which families can store their games, music, movies, photos, and videos in one place for the next decade. If we'd stopped and asked a consumer if they thought they needed all this functionality and horsepower, the answer might have been no. But as Henry Ford once said, if I had asked my customers what they wanted, they would have said a faster horse. Now, any conversation about 2008 should begin with the first big business story of the year. Blu-ray won the format war over HD DVD. And as many of you have written, the PS3 is the most complete and future-proof Blu-ray player on the market today. PS3 offers an experience for both gamers and developers that no other console brings to match. Games like Metal Gear Solid 4 aren't just exclusive to the PlayStation 3, they're only possible on the PlayStation 3, thanks in part to Blu-ray. There are millions of family today going into retail looking to move their content from the PC to the living room. And when they do their research, they find that PS3 is the obvious choice for looking for a deep pool of functionality and capabilities with something for everyone. Families can play games on it, load pictures, make music, uh, playlists, and watch high-definition movies on the big screen. But we're not here to talk about all-in-one fun functionality. We're here to talk about genre-defining kick-ass games. If PlayStation in 2007 was all about hardware, PlayStation in 2008 is all about software. Since the last holiday season, we've seen some of the biggest titles on the PS3 platform. The waterfall of titles in 2008 first began when we caught a glimpse of the absolutely stunning HD images of realistic racing simulation in Polyphony Digital's Gran Turismo 5 prologue. Then we lived the life of Nico Bellic in search of the American dream in Grand Theft Auto 4, and in one of the most eagerly anticipated new title launches in years, Metal Gear Solid 4 Guns of the Patriots not only met expectations in every way, they exceeded them. And if there's any doubt, this is the reason why you buy a PlayStation 3. Games like Metal Gear Solid on PS3 are a good reminder of the true meaning of exclusive content. And while exclusive downloadable content is nice, but exclusive games are what make up consumers' minds and drive the business. PS3 has more exclusive than any other platform with more than 75 titles. And that's just in North America alone. And the great content isn't just for PS3. On the PSP, we saw God of War, Final Fantasy Crisis Core, Echo Chrome, and Patapon. PS2 consumers could enjoy big name franchises like Rock Band, Buzz, WWE SmackDown vs. Roar, Guitar Hero, and of course Madden and Tiger Woods. We all saw SingStar make its mark on the PS2, and then through PS3, flood my SingStar with a lot of really, really bad singing. Today we have what no other company has, three successful platforms in the market at once. Now let's start off with our flagship product, the PlayStation 3. I agree with what CNET and so many others have written in recent months. 2008 is the year of the PlayStation 3. But it'll also be remembered as the year when we set in motion things that will define the industry for the next decade and beyond. We have a lot of great things to show you here today. And to kick it off, here's a look at the third generation title from Insomniac Games on PlayStation 3, Resistance 2. <laughs> Stone, we have visual of the hostile requesting permission. 
gonna have to find a way to lure that thing underneath the bridge. We'll have Demo standing by. It's 1953, America. For the past two years, the Chimera have been testing our borders, attacking small towns on the fringes, and converting their populations into something else, something alien. In 1951, we lost Chicago. Millions never made it out. We abandoned them to the Chimera. Now Chicago is enemy territory, defended by creatures like that 300-foot-tall Leviathan you just saw. Chicago's former inhabitants roam its streets, mindless, hungry, and no longer human. And ever since their mile-wide Chimeran battleships crossed our coastlines in November of 53, a similar tale has played out across the cities of our border states. This alien fleet now hovers above our land, raining down spires containing twisted creatures to spread their horrific virus. Resistance 2 is a story of a country under siege, a story that's been broken by a superior foe, a country whose fate rests in the hands of a lone army lieutenant who may have more in common with the enemy than those he's pledged to defend. But Resistance 2 is much more than a single-player campaign. Resistance 2 also breaks new ground with its eight-player online co-op, 60-player online competitive multiplayer modes, and forward-thinking community features. In fact, the word we ought most often use to describe Resistance at Insomniac is scale. And while many games talk about scale, Resistance 2 truly delivers. Scale describes the huge bosses you'll fight in both the single player and the co-op campaign, like the guy we just saw. Scale describes the expansive environments you'll discover as players traverse the United States. Scale describes the giant Chimeran warships looming over the country, ships you'll actually get to board in the game. And of course, Scale describes the epic battles you'll experience in single player, co-op, and competitive modes. Guys, bottom line is that Resistance 2 offers more than any shooter in 2008. So to conclude, I'm going to show you the latest Resistance 2 trailer in which we reveal a new level, Twin Falls, Idaho. Now, what you're about to see is all footage captured directly from the game. I'm Ted Price, President and CEO of Insomniac Games, and this is Resistance 2. For Radio USA, this is Henry Stillman. Today, the country shudders in the wake of cataclysmic devastation. Torn by war with a brutal and terrifying enemy, the likes of which we have never seen. And this morning, I awoke to the sound of thundering crashes that I thought could only be an earthquake. But as I looked outside, I saw their battleships looming over the city. Each one wider than Forbes Field and each leaving nothing but burning, disfigured wreckage in its wake. Former friends and neighbors now lie in storm drains, limbs twisted in ways I can't begin to describe. This struggle for the very survival of mankind, this struggle that has now reached across the shores of our homeland, this struggle, ladies and gentlemen, may now be forever lost. That game looks amazing, Ted, as always. Resistance 2 is an epic title that will blow you away and is set to redefine the online gaming experience. And speaking of redefining gaming experience, when historians look back on this time in history and the trends that are shaping the world of digital and, and technology, one of the first things they're going to be talking about is user-generated content. One of the most exciting possibilities for next generation consumers is what happens when user generated content comes full force in the gaming world. We've all seen a glimpse of, the, a glimpse of that future. We call it Little Big Planet. 
There have been a lot of nice things written about Little Big Planet since we first introduced the world to Sackboy and a title created exclusively for PS3 by the mad geniuses at Media Molecule. What better way to engage in user generated content than creating, playing and sharing levels through Little Big Planet. We all take pride in mastering a new game, but Little Big Planet allows gamers to design games, to have the ability to imagine and create level after level and hurdle after hurdle, and then challenge your friends to play them. So you see, Little Big Planet isn't just a new game, this is a whole new experience. It's the first time that user generated content, social networking, and gaming have come together under one title. This is something that you can sit down and play with your six year old daughter or your hardcore gaming friends and have a smile on your face every moment you're doing so. The other thing I love about it is that it's uniquely PlayStation. Every year, the most trying part of this presentation is when I run through the business updates and industry overview, and I'm at that part right now. So to inject a little more creativity, we created a level of Little Big Planet to share with you all. Just think, if Little Big Planet can help me make E3 more interesting, just imagine what it could do for a gamer that has really had some good creative juices flowing. And I'd like to invite Alex Evans, co-founder of Media Molecule, to the stage. Alex and his team have helped me pull this together, and we'll use this level to run through a bit of the presentation. As you can see behind me, we're running a special level of Little Big Planet that was created by the team at Media Molecule to help us illustrate a few points. How's it going, Alex? Good, thanks. So we got Sackboy there, and as you know, I'm a Boston boy, and uh, that's the home to three championship teams, just like we have three championship caliber platforms. So could we give Sackboy a little bit more of a Boston flavor, kind of make me feel at home? There we go. All right, now I feel better. <laughs> Let me know if Sackboy needs a breather at any point during this presentation because we're talking about a growth in the industry and he's got some pretty steep mountains to climb. So far, 2008 has been the kind of year that makes me proud to be in the gaming industry. The combination of innovative hardware, hot commodity software, and a growing consumer interest in HD has helped our industry generate more than $6.6 .6 billion of revenue in the first five months of this year alone. In fact, NPD has been estimating that the gaming industry revenue will soar as high as $23 billion in 2008. And the PlayStation brand is a key driver of this growth. With three powerful platforms, we have the industry equivalent of oceanfront property with a commanding control of retail shelf space. Once again, we're at the forefront of the expansion of our industry for another year. And for the year-to-date numbers through the month of June, we've sold more than 1.8 million PS3s here in the United States, and more than 1.6 million PSPs. And something we've seen before on PlayStation platforms, and only on PlayStation platforms, more than 1.5 million PS2s for a product in its ninth year on the market. In other words, we've sold in more than 5 billion units of hardware across the PlayStation family in the first six months of this calendar year. And again, that's just in the United States. That success has been spread out across the globe, not only in North America, but in Europe and Asia as well. And again, with more than 100 million PlayStations and 140 million PlayStation 2 units sold worldwide, as a global company, we're always working to expand our footprint. And today I'm pleased to announce that we're turning our attention south. Starting in 2008, we'll engage in distribution in the Latin America as well. We're well on our way to achieving our fiscal year goals outlined back in May of selling more than 9 million PS2s, 10 million PS3s, and 15 million PSPs. At retail, revenue generation is up as well. Since 1995, PlayStation has generated more than $50 billion at retail. To build on the momentum of our PlayStation 3 lineup, I'm also pleased to announce that we're going to be making some new games available on the platform as part of our greatest hits program on PlayStation 3. So starting later this year, our best PS3 games will be available at a $29.99 retail, including from our first party studios, Resistance Fall of Man, MotorStorm, and Warhawk. And from Activision, Call of Duty 3. From Electronic Arts, Fight Night, and Need for Speed Carbon. From Ubisoft, 
Rainbow Six Vegas, and Assassin's Creed. And from Bethesda, Elder Scrolls. And lastly, from Tecmo, Ninja Gaiden. So Alex, this is uh, some incredible stuff, and you, uh, you helped me a lot. A lot. Um, what is the target consumer for, for Little Big Planet? Well, thank you very much. <laughs> Cheers. Um, thank you. Um, I mean, it's amazing to have this opportunity, and I think, I think the thing that I love about this, this game is that whether you want to just recreate your, your favorite golf course or if you're a hardcore gamer and want to create a whole story of levels, you can do that in this game. So I think it appeals to a wide range of people. And, you know, nothing but positive press, but you've got to be so proud. Is there any one thing that is really most gratifying about the experience so far? Yeah, I mean, obviously it's been a huge reaction support for the team. And what I find amazing is that this concept of creative gaming, which could be so complicated, right? People have just really got it. Like, we were blown away by how much people understood the concept. And I just look forward to seeing what people will make with it. So uh, it's over to you guys. Come this October, I, please make some great levels. I can't wait to play them. Well, I can absolutely guarantee that I'd love to let Sackboy finish the presentation. I think most of the audience would as well, but I should probably let you get back to finish Thank the game up. Thanks again, Alex. Cheers. Take care. Bye. Personally, this is one of my favorite games with absolutely unlimited potential. You can expect to see us really get behind this title as one of our ten pole releases and a great way to expand our PS3 user base beyond males and core gamers. If you want to try it yourself, please join us in the Showcase Pavilion and Press Lounge later. From one of our newest PlayStation products, I'd like to turn my attention now to one of our most established and popular products. Let's talk about PlayStation 2. In many ways, the success of PS2 has allowed us to be more aggressive with our approach to PS3. It's been an important incubator for the next generation adoption. And today, we're seeing much more up conversion of PS2 owners embracing PS3. This has always been a platform for the biggest games and the most popular titles. And in 2008, we're introducing more than 130 titles to PlayStation 2. We continue to have incredible support from our developers and publishing partners on PlayStation 2. And here's a quick sample of those titles. One thing that's always distinguished PS2 is that we have a history of developing games and designing products for everybody. As you can see from that video, the biggest brands in the industry are still delivering content on the PlayStation 2. That's especially true when it comes to social gaming. The PS2 at $129 is a great entry into the phenomena of social gaming. Fun and challenging games like SingStar, Rock Band, and Guitar Hero are perfect for parties and ideal for play with family and friends. We helped lead the rush to social gaming five years ago when we introduced the world to iToy and SingStar. And more recently, introduced the third franchise for PS2, the game that makes you feel like you're right in the middle of a quiz show, Buzz. This is the year that Buzz really hits the big time. He's making the move from PS2 to PSP, 
with six rounds exclusively designed for PlayStation Portable. Not only is Buzz coming to the PSP for the first time, he's also getting a digital upgrade. And it'll be available on PS3 this September. Buzz PS3 will also have special themed packs available via PlayStation Network this year. And then, of course, there's SingStar. Since launching the first SingStar title in 2006, we've seen more than 15 million global sales for this franchise. And at least that many performances that leaves a little bit to be desired. But they're all in great fun. Since launching the PS3 earlier this year, we've downloaded more than 1.9 million songs to consumers worldwide via the Sing Store. Nine years into this life cycle, we continue to drive the PS2 platform with unique consumer offerings and incredible gaming value. The PS2 is a perfect entry-level gaming system for any family. And to help them get started, I'm pleased to announce a new bundle available this fall. We'll be introducing a limited edition LEGO Batman PS2 bundle aimed at these young families. The PS2 will not only come with LEGO Batman the video game, but also with the animated film Justice League New Frontiers on DVD, and it'll be available this fall for $149. With great games and a great value like this, there's reason to believe that the PS2 will keep going strong. When we started PlayStation in, in two, or the original PlayStation in 1995, there was a real fear that individual experiences enabled by technology would lead to great isolation. And what we've learned since is that digital technology is less about isolating from a real world and more about connecting to it. That's especially true uh, as we live more and more of our lives on the internet. And for many next generation consumers, being connected is all they've ever known. And that's why we've created our next topic of discussion, PlayStation Network. This is a generation whose digital identity is as important to them as their driver's license and social security number. Which is why, starting this fall, all PlayStation users will have a single sign-on so that no matter where they sign in, all their PlayStation information will go with them. You'll sign on to your PC at work, see your friends list, send them a message to set up a game later that night, and since you can join PlayStation Network whether you have a PS3 or not, this evolution will help make it much easier for users to migrate from PS2 to PS3. We've heard the PlayStation community loud and clear. They want us to work to make PlayStation Network the best online gaming experience in the industry. And we share their goal wholeheartedly. And for those hungry for a more powerful digital distribution experience, we're working to make the PlayStation Network your destination. Together with the PS3 and PSP, our PlayStation Network enables us to provide games, movies, and TV to photos, community, and online social interaction. Together, they form the very core of what next generation consumers are all about. While the PlayStation Store has recently received a facelift from our overall commitment remains groundbreaking content available to the masses all through an easy to use and easy to navigate new interface. This is one of the strengths of our platform. When you bring home a PS3, you get tons of additional content connectivity and community interaction with no hidden fees. Most of you have definitely noticed in just last month, we had more than 20 million pieces of content downloaded, bringing the total since our November 2006 launch of PlayStation Network up to 180 million downloads. It took about 400 days to reach the first 5 million PlayStation Network registered accounts worldwide, but we went from 5 million to 10 million in less than half that time. With an acceleration like that, it's clear that PlayStation Network is becoming a destination for digital content. We all know that one of the most critical elements of the PlayStation Network, which we've focused on since day one, is the games. Now, what's an E3 press conference without a few surprises? We all know PlayStation Network is a great way to enhance a franchise between Blu-ray releases and deliver great add-on content. And as we've discussed, it's a great way to deliver amazing and complete gaming experiences. One of our most popular franchises is getting a little bit of both, via a brand new title on the PlayStation Network later this summer. I'd like to introduce you all to Ratchet & Clank Future, Quest for Booty.
So Quest for Booty is a new concept. It's a shorter game at a lower price, and yet it has all the high intensity of one of our AAA titles. Uh, we paced it much like a big summer blockbuster film. It's got action, suspense, mystery, and the humor you'd expect to find in a Ratchet and Clank game. Guys, I'm not looking for any trouble. Quest for Booty is a continuation of the Ratchet and Clank future saga. It begins where Tools of Destruction left off, the search for Clank, who was mysteriously abducted by the Zoni. We focus more on platforming, exploration, and we're also requiring players to think a little bit more. Ratchet's got this new ability with his wrench that he carries, where the head pops off, and there's this energy tether that he can use to manipulate distant objects, and generally manipulate the world. Ratchet can also pick things up with his wrench, uh, which he couldn't do before. He can pick up these heliogrubs, which are these creatures that light up when they're scared, and then he can use those heliogrubs to travel through Moro Caverns, where we have light and dark gameplay. This is a game that will appeal to people who are fans of Tools of Destruction, who want answers about Clank's mysterious disappearance, and it's also going to appeal to people who've never played a Ratchet and Clank game. It will be a great introduction to what Ratchet and Clank is all about. Thank you. Ratchet and Clank Quest for Booty is another great exclusive game available only on PS3 this summer for $14.99. And what an exciting way, it, what it, how exciting it is that we have a lot more creative content and artistic titles uh, like this one planned. At PlayStation Network, we always stress that you don't have to choose between quality and quantity, you can have both. We're not interested in filling up our store with titles that nobody wants to play just so we can say we have the most games. I'd like to show you a little bit more about what I mean. On PlayStation Network, anyone can see that we have a li wide library of great exclusive content. From short form creative hits like Flow, Everyday Shooter, and Echo Chrome, to full titles like Warhawk and Gran Turismo 5 Prologue. 
With games like Super Stardust HD, Pain and Pixel Junk Monsters, pr we're proving that you can have a great entertainment experience for about the cost of a movie ticket. Another visionary use of the PlayStation Network is evident in one of our more prominent PlayStation franchises, Gran Turismo 5 Prologue. Released in April with a revolutionary new feature for video games called Gran Turismo TV. Brought to you by legendary designer Kazunori Yamuchi. It offers worldwide automotive and motorsport programming in game through the PlayStation Network. Polyphony Digital is launching the pay per view distribution of GT TV and Gran Turismo 5 Prologue with a wide variety of content. Let's take a look. TV on PlayStation 3. Another revolutionary breakthrough coming at you through Gran Turismo 5 Prologue. This is the true beginning of Gran Turismo TV. All out free and pay per view distribution of licensed automotive programs from around the world. Broadcasting loads of original content produced by Polyphony Digital in full high definition. Bringing you footage filmed at famous and exciting racing events from around the globe. Get a world exclusive first peek into the heart of Ferrari headquarters by Gran Turismo's producer, Kazunori Yamauchi and an in-depth look into the hollowed proving grounds of Ferrari, the Fiorano Test Course. Watch reviews of the world's newest sports cars and behind-the-scenes footage of their development. Brought to you faster than anywhere else. Presenting a variety of standard and high-definition automotive content. Japan's popular touring car race, the Super GT. The world-class exciting drift series, D1 Grand Prix. Professional drivers test and review the hottest new cars, best motoring. Fun with tuned cars, video option. And BBC's world-renowned automotive entertainment, Top Gear. Distribution of all this and more starts on Gran Turismo TV, accessed through the PlayStation Network. Only on Gran Turismo 5 Prologue for the PlayStation 3. Thank you. Thank you, Kazunori. This content will be available starting August 1st via Gran Turismo 5 Prologue and it's just one more example of original programming on PlayStation Network. While content is extremely important, we also know that gamers aren't in it just for the high score anymore. Next generation consumers are in it today for the community experience, to engage others, to compete, to share, to communicate, and whenever possible, brag a little bit about their gaming mastery. The nice thing about the new generation of technology is that soon, we're all gonna be able to call BS on those guys who brag about the proficiency but don't have the scores to back it up. With some of our newest additions, such as trophies, we're providing our users with the functionality to track, display, and brag about their gameplay accomplishments. And we'll be expanding on this feature to reward PlayStation community in some very special and innovative ways. PlayStation Network is working and providing that, just that combination of gameplay and community that is defining the future of this industry. Now this brings us to PlayStation Home. I absolutely assure you that when PlayStation Home is publicly available through our expanded beta program, your patience will be more than rewarded. PlayStation Home is the binding factor for the PlayStation Network, bringing games, film, video, music, and branded content together to provide the ultimate social experience for gamers. We've made incredible progress and we've got some great developer and publisher support in PlayStation Home for game-specific spaces, including titles like Warhawk and Uncharted, which are available to experience in our press lounge this week. And we're also seeing great momentum from our publishing partners, including Ubisoft, which has already been active in the PlayStation Home beta. 
And we've got additional commitments from EA, Activision, and LucasArts as well as non-gaming partners like Nike. I'd like to share with you a new video that shows some of the progress we've made and give you a look at what PlayStation Home Experience will be all about. Thank you. If you want to kick off your shoes and walk around a bit, we have a dedicated uh, home area in our press lounge, so swing by and take a look. Now I know many of you are interested to learn more about our new PlayStation Network service that will allow you to download full-length movies and TV shows through the PlayStation Store. I'm very pleased to be able to unveil this service publicly today. This is a true Sony United effort. And I'd like to thank and acknowledge the great effort of our friends at Sony Media Software and Services, Sony Pictures, and Sony Corporation. But this isn't just about Sony content. So I'd like to also thank our many content partners. Just as our games and our, on our, uh, our game store serves game publishers, uh, all game publishers, the PlayStation Network's video delivery service is open for business for all studios and networks. On day one, I'm excited to welcome major studio industry partners like Sony Pictures, Fox Film and Television, MGM Studios, Lionsgate, Warner, Disney, Paramount, Turner Entertainment, and Funimation to offer some of today's most popular titles in both standard and high definition. We're offering both rental and electronic sell-through with competitive pricing. TV shows in both standard definition and high definition will be available starting at $1.99 per episode, and movie prices will range from $2.99 to $5.99 for rentals, and from $9.99 to $14.99 for movie purchases. Of course, for our users, our video delivery service through the PlayStation Store will have full integration into the PlayStation Network from the same login and wallet management, all within the same familiar interface. One of the coolest parts of this new service, and a huge differentiator from the other services, is that this content is portable. So after you download it to your PS3, it can be placed on your PSP as well. You can have it at your home, you can take it with you on the road, or both. It can be put on multiple devices at the same time. I'd like to invite Eric Lempel, Director of PlayStation Network Operations, to join me on stage and quickly walk you through how the new PlayStation Network service will work. How's it going, Eric? Hi, Jack. Thanks for having me. Sure. Good to see you. Good to see you. So as you can see here, I'm on the cross media bar. I'm going to go to the PlayStation Store like a user normally would. And uh, we've got to sign in. We've been disconnected for a second. It's a, it is a live demo. Great. OK, here we go. So you're all familiar with the PlayStation Store today, and this is the game store. But you'll see in the upper left-hand corner a new tab that says Video. I'm going to go over to that tab over there, click on it, and now we're in the Video Store. And this is, UI will be instantly familiar to the millions of PlayStation Network users that use the store today. As you can see, we have a wide variety of categories that make it easy to find the content you want. We, both have, we have rental and purchase options for both movies, television, and a special HD section for those users looking for a high-definition experience. So let's browse to the movie category. So as you can see here, when you get into a category, we have a bunch of subcategories, and these are the subcategories for the movie category. I'm going to go over to Studios, and uh, here we have a bunch of the studios that Jack mentioned earlier. Disney, Fox, Lionsgate, MGM, Paramount, of course, Sony Pictures, and Warner Brothers. I'm really excited to welcome our content partners to the PlayStation family. So uh, I want to show you a few of the pages and see uh, what they look like. So let's bounce into Lionsgate. 
And you see all the content will appear on the right side of the screen, while on the left side of the screen, we can feature the latest and greatest. And also, the screen changes to give you a nice branded experience for that partner. And I think I'll uh, bounce into MGM as well to show you what that one looks like. And uh, again, I can scroll through the content on the right. And uh, let's go over to Sony Pictures and select a movie. So I'm going to go down the right side of the screen. And I can also hit the square button to change to a list view. So if I do that, I can uh, look at everything in alphabetical order. But I'll go back to the other view. And uh, let's see, Jack, I'm going to look for one of your favorites here. I think uh, Walk Hard, that's, uh, yeah, that's one that you've, uh, that's that you've liked. So yeah. uh, mm -hmm. as we bounce into this title, you see that it's available for rental in SD. I'll click in, and you'll see all the metadata you'd expect to see, file size, running time, long description. And I can even preview the content by clicking on this button here. And this will immediately start a streaming preview. And while this plays, I can also bring it full screen by hitting the square button. So we'll uh, just wait for this to come up and uh, take a look at this for a couple seconds. Give him a minute, son. Dewey Cox needs to think about his entire life before he plays. From the time he was a boy. Let me connect out of that. So how long will it take to download a standard def movie? Well, while it definitely depends on your bandwidth speed, it'll take about an hour to download a two-hour standard definition movie. But the nice thing is we've incorporated progressive download into the service so a user can start watching a movie a minute after they make a purchase. Can you talk a little about the difference between uh, the download model and uh, rental and purchase? Sure. Let's go uh, back up to the top and find another movie. So uh, I think this time I'll navigate to a movie by looking through the uh, genre category. So I'll jump in there, and this will show you all the genres we have available. And uh, let's see, I'll go over to uh, Action Adventure. And uh, one of my favorites is Cloverfield, so I'll click on that. And here with Cloverfield, you see we have it available in rental for both HD and SD. And we have it available for sell-through. So I'm going to click on that. And with one more click, I can buy the product, download it to my PS3 hard drive, and instantly start playing it with progressive download. So I'm on the road all the time. One of the things that's got me most excited is the PSP integration. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. So there's actually two ways to get content to the PSP. One way is through the PS3, and I'll uh, bounce out to the cross media bar, and I already uh, purchased Cloverfield prior to the press conference today. So you can see it's out here. All I have to do now is hit the triangle button, hook up my PSP to my PS3 with a USB cable, and it'll instantly copy the movie over to the PSP. Another great way is to go to the PlayStation Store on the PC, hook up your PSP to your PC with a USB cable, and you'll have all the same content, both rental and purchase options, available to you there. And uh, another great thing with the PSP is that you can use the video out feature to show videos on a screen or take it portable wherever you go. That's awesome. Well, really appreciate it, Eric. Thanks for joining us Thanks, today. Thanks, Jack. Take care. As you can see, the PlayStation Network new delivery service is a huge step towards advancing the PSP and the PS3 value. There's something here for everyone, from the hardcore gamers to those families looking to buy the best, most versatile anchor for home entertainment. It's one of the purest expressions yet of this company's ultimate value proposition. And I'm happy to announce this new service and content will be available when we publish to the store tonight. So when you're finished digesting all of the news content today, that's right. We invite you to go home, fire up your PS3, and explore and enjoy a wide variety of TV and movie content. Check back often as we'll be adding new titles each week. The video delivery service is not only important to PlayStation Network, but key to Sony's overall strategy to bring digital content, both movies and games, to the living room. Now, obviously, the PSP integration is here and give us a big competitive advantage. So let's talk a little bit more about PSP. Last year, we introduced the PSP Slim and sales shot through the roof. To me, this is one of the most elegant products we've ever made. What I like most about PSP is the multifunctionality and the fact that I can play a lot of my favorite games everywhere I go in gorgeous resolution. And 13 million other people in North America have come to the same conclusion. From a portable gaming perspective, there is no equal. 
Not only can you physically transfer content like we just showed you, you can sync your PSP with your PS3 wirelessly. Combine that with the other gaming and non-gaming capabilities and that's an offering that no other handheld can begin to match. Last year we made that experience even more attractive with our two entertainment packs. And they've helped propel PSP sales to, uh, significantly and contributed to the growth of our PSP install base. Earlier this year we introduced the God of War entertainment pack and we saw a similar spike. And we expect the same from the Madden entertainment pack we announced for this fall. I'm also pleased to announce that this fall we'll be introducing a new entertainment pack to the PSP lineup. One targeted to our younger demographic. Starting in October, we'll launch our family-friendly Ratchet and Clank Size Matters entertainment pack, which comes with a silver PSP, Ratchet and Clank Size Matters, and the blockbuster movie National Treasures 2 Book of Secrets on UMD. It also comes with a one gig memory stick duo and a PlayStation Network voucher to the critically acclaimed Echo Chrome, all for $199. And we expect this entertainment pack to have similar success with the gift givers and PSP fans alike as the Daxter Entertainment Pack did last holiday season. You've already heard about this franchise once today, but we're here to introduce a new title to PSP, one that the talented team up at Sony Bend Studio have been working on, and I'd like to unveil it for the first time. PSP Resistance Retribution. On July the 11th, 1951, the Americans launched an assault on the eastern coast of England. At least in Britain, the Camara were defeated. The Khmer launched an attack that overwhelmed all of Europe in a matter of weeks. The original conversion centers were found abandoned in the process of being dismantled by Khmer drones. As we attempt to reverse engineer the complex technologies we find, the mystery of the Khmer only deepens. Only deepens. Only deepens. <laughs> We've had great success with games for PSP and we're only going to improve on that trend. With an install base of 35 million units worldwide, it's easy to see why there's such traction in the PSP developing community. And with titles like Patapon 2, Loco Roco 2, and Midnight Club LA Remix, we're seeing increasing momentum for the software on PSP with titles that meet the demands of the core PSP demographics. Let's take a look at some of the new PSP software highlights for this and next year.
Frankly, we've always felt that PSP is one of the keys to Sony owning the living room. It's not just a nice handheld device that parents can keep their kids occupied on long car trips. Between its flexible memory capacity, its crystal clear sound, its ability to carry movies, photos, and music on, and display them on PSP's amazing screen, this is every bit the hybrid device inside and outside the living room that we've all imagined. Consumers continue to move content from their home office to their living room. And especially when they find they can use the PSP to download full-length movies, TV shows, and other video content through the PS3 or the PlayStation Store. This is the reality that we're building between the PlayStation Portable and the PlayStation Network and PlayStation 3. Once it takes hold with a content service that is rich, deep, and affordable, with titles everybody wants to watch and play, the living room is going to be, never going to be the same. And we're proud to be leading that charge today. Now let's bring us back to PlayStation 3. Part of the reason why so many developers like working with us is that we're the only player in the industry that has embraced open platforms. One partner that appreciates our approach is Google. Google's products and services are strategically placed throughout our business. If, for example, you hit a walk-off home run in tonight's All-Star game on MLB 09 The Show, you can record that footage and directly bring it to your, from your P, uh, PS3 to YouTube, which of course is owned by Google, where it can be viewed on a dedicated PlayStation 3 brand channel, and it can be voted on by the community as the best or worst footage. As Kasurai mentioned recently in Tokyo, we're set to deliver an entirely new experience to our users that will allow fans to see worldwide news in real time through a network-connected PS3 and TV in their living room with live news, weather, and live webcam feeds. We call it Life with PlayStation. And it will be available by the end of the month. The SCE universe of companies has grown over the years, significantly bolstering our brand and our ability to deliver the industry's most innovative entertainment. Last April, we announced that Sony Online Entertainment had joined the SCE family. And it's with a great deal of excitement that we officially welcome Sony Online here today. As a visionary online games company, Sony Online Entertainment will help boost our ability to deliver the industry's most innovative entertainment. Today, for the first time ever, we'll preview one of Sony Online Entertainment's most anticipated games, the DC Universe Online. SOE has a remarkable track record in the massive multiplayer online space, starting with one of the most popular video games of all time, EverQuest. Now, with upcoming titles such as the spy-themed MMO shooter The Agency to the kid-friendly Free Realms, SOE's expertise is second to none. And with these titles coming to PlayStation 3, our exclusive console offering only gets better. And at this time, I'd like to introduce the man behind DC Universe Online. You probably know him better as a legend among comic book artists and the brilliant pen and ink behind Batman Hush and Superman for Tomorrow. Please welcome Jim Lee, executive creator and director of Sony Online Entertainment's newest title, DC Universe Online. Jack Palance, I'm not. Um, my name is actually Jim Lee, and I am literally pumped to be here today to show you guys a first sneak peek and an early look at the DC Universe online game. My concept crew at Wildstorm and I have been working with the fine folk over at Sony Online Entertainment for three years now, building this world up from scratch. And I have to admit, I'm actually a little bit anxious, and, and now a little winded, actually. <coughs> um, and very, very excited to be showing this for the very first time. Just a little snippet of what we've achieved so far. You know, it's funny. Um, this really is a dream project for me in many ways. Um, it's one I feel I've been training for in my entire life. When I was a kid, my parents wanted me to become a doctor, uh, to follow my father's footsteps. But when I was 12, all I really wanted to do was read comic books and play video games. And as an adult, I got to realize one of my childhood passions and I got to be the artist on uh, characters like Superman and Batman, and I actually started my own comics publishing line called Wildstorm Productions. As far as my other obsession, 
I remain an avid gamer today. And by avid gamer, I mean I am seriously hooked on MMOs. I actually started playing EverQuest on its initial launch date, got to level 50 that summer, and was the first paladin, not the second, not the third, I was the first paladin on my server to get the Fiery Avenger from the Plane of Sky after a grueling, grueling 20-hour camp. It sounded really cool at the, <laughs> really cool at the time, honestly. Um, <laughs> but it, it was actually a lot of fun, honestly. So those of you who know what I'm talking about, you know that it's not an easy thing to do. Um, so today really uh, marks the day where I get to merge these two passions together in what is probably the coolest and most unique project to date, the DC Universe online game. Imagine being, imagine being able to create your own superhero or supervillain and enter the DC Universe to fight alongside or against the world's most powerful or well-known characters. Imagine how cool it would be to help Batman take down the Joker or to defend Metropolis against the diabolical armies of Brainiac 13 as they rain down upon the city. I mean, that's a cool image, so I'm going to actually let you think about that one for a little extra second here. Imagine being a villain and helping all the inmates at Arkham Asylum escape to attack the Batcave, or to conspire and scheme with Lex Luthor to destroy Superman. Imagine how cool it would be to explore the dark Gothic streets of Gotham City or fly high above the dazzling Art Deco skyscrapers in Metropolis. It's certainly a project that would have made my 12-year-old brain explode with excitement. But you can stop imagining now, because we're actually going to show you, for the first time ever, just a sneak peek at what we've achieved so far. I present... <laughs> For generations, you've witnessed the battles of the greatest heroes of our time in the pages of DC Comics. Now, step into the world of DC Universe Online. Brought to life by legendary comic book artist Jim Lee. Ripped from the adventures of the comics. Straight from the artists that draw them. Experience the DC Universe as never before and harness the true power of your PlayStation 3 system or PC gaming platform. Fight against or alongside Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, The Joker, and all your favorite DC legends as you build your legacy in an epic battle against legions of super-powered enemies. Make the world your weapon. Crush your foes. And become the ultimate superhero. Or super villain. The door to the DC Universe has opened. Now is the time to build your legacy. The time has come. The future awaits. The next legend is you. Great content and one-handed push-ups. I've seen it all now. But now you should be clear that we've got great content for every gamer and that the momentum is building. Last year, we lowered the price of entry on the PS3 and we had a holiday season of blockbusters. We followed that by two of the biggest franchises on PS3 in Grand Theft Auto and Metal Gear Solid. We continue to work hard to increase the value proposition for consumers by improving the functionality of our hardware. And today, I'm pleased to announce that we've decided to make the 80 gigabyte PlayStation 3 a primary focus of our hardware lineup going forward. Starting in September, we will launch an 80 gigabyte PS3 that has the same functionality as the current 40 gigabyte PS3. And we're giving consumers twice the storage capacity for the same price. Consumers have been gravitating towards the 80 gigabyte value since last year. And now we're offering that same value for $399. This is by far the best combination of memory, graphics, speed, power, and consumer value of any console in the industry today. This new 80 gigabyte PS3 is perfectly suited for high definition downloads of games, movies, and more. 
There are millions of PS2 users on the cusp of upgrading to a PS3, and we want to do all we can to make that transition as easy as possible. This movement from inside Sony Computer Entertainment has been matched with movement from within the development community. Every month, the gap widens a little bit more between what developers can do on other systems and what they can do on the PS3. And they're starting to harness the power of the PlayStation 3 and hone in on what separates PlayStation experiences from any other. We asked some of our publishing partners and developers to describe how the processing power, graphics, and Blu-ray capability create separation between Sony and every other console out there. And here's what they had to say. When I think of the PlayStation 3, two years ago, it was a pretty new revolutionary, but new and very foreign to us. We didn't really know a lot what was going on. Everyone was kind of learning at the same time. Uh, now, when we look at it, you know, we feel a lot more at home with the PlayStation 3. From where we were a few years ago, we've, we've come a long way, um, and we're just now getting to where we can really start harnessing the superpower there. So I think there's a lot more we can do. Actually, at this point, we have all of our major game systems using at least partly the SPUs. So that means larger budgets for a designer, which then translate in you know, more AI, more rendering, more physics, more animation, and more meaningful and new gameplay experiences for the players. For Oblivion, what we try to do is cram as much through that main processor as possible and just use the SPUs for side tasks. For Fallout, what we're finding is the SPUs are much more important. They just tear through everything you can give them. Uh, we put physics, AI, animation on them, and they just eat them alive. My programmers on Pop are the same as we're on Assassin's Creed, and comparing their job then to now, it's just night and day. They're so much more efficient, and it's just a much, much easier process for them now. Sony made a couple of very forward-looking decisions with the PlayStation 3. One is that we don't have to worry about disk space. We have a lot of storage capability that's going to be very useful for Far Cry 2, especially for uh, user-created content. We are really excited about the, the potential of the PS3 um, because we have a lot of ideas internally, and we've just started the collaboration with Industry Light and Magic, and we really want to push the technology further in games, and this is something that the power of the PS3 will make possible really almost the sky's limit in terms of what you can get on there and what kind of content you can put on the disc. You're really only limited by your internal resources. And the fact that the Blu-ray disc just has effectively infinite storage capacity compared to, you know, the competitors just means it's one less thing we have to worry about. It's one more thing that makes development on the PlayStation 3 forgiving and, and, and easy. Uh, one of the best things about the PlayStation 3 is that every single one comes with a hard drive. It's really just a gold mine. The more you hack away at it, the more treasure you're going to find underneath the surface. The more power, speed, memory, everything. It's a really powerful system, and if you have really creative individuals and really great um, engineers working for you, you're going to be able to do great stuff. The great thing right now about the PlayStation 3 platform is a lot of the PlayStation 2 consumers have now come over to the PlayStation 3. We're seeing the sports games that people have loved playing on the Sony platforms all along. Now they're going to be able to get that full, rich experience in sports gaming on the PlayStation 3. I think what you're really going to see is people, when they start pushing their gameplay, their AI, their pathfinding, all those other features of the game, start using, doing that on the SPU rather than just devoting that to hardcore map. There's a lot of untapped potential right now on PS3. I don't think there's many games that use even 80% of of the, the SPUs, so I'm really looking forward to really rich experiences and rich realistic worlds. I think we're just starting to really scratch the surface of, of what you can do with the PlayStation. That coupled with the fact that, that Sony is releasing new functionality and features for us to be able to take advantage of, I think is going to make it real exciting for the future. As you can see, there's a tremendous amount of support from our publishing partners. And we're seeing increased momentum in the advances that developers are making to capitalize on PlayStation 3 and PlayStation Network. From a first party perspective, we've had an unprecedented lineup of exclusive content. Huge franchises like MotorStorm, Infamous, SOCOM, and Resistance can't be found anywhere else. SE Worldwide Studios provides a competitive advantage like no other, with 23 exclusive games on PS3 alone including 10 on Blu-ray and 13 on PlayStation Network. I'd like to show you a lineup that will actualize what I've been saying here today, that 2008 is the year of PlayStation 3.
is how it begins. So much. I'm sure you can see why we're, so, why we're so excited about the rest of the year and what it's going to bring for PlayStation. It's one of the best lineups of content and exclusive titles we've ever rolled out. We've spent a good portion of today showing you some of the titles coming through the rest of this year, almost all of which will be playable in both the Showcase Pavilion and our press lounge. But I'd like to spend the next few moments giving you a look at what's to come beyond this holiday season. Yes, it's true, God of War 3 is coming to PlayStation 3. We all know you're clamoring for Kratos, so here's a trailer to whet your appetite. In the beginning, there was chaos. Our victory brought order to the land. Prosperity to mankind. Now, that order is threatened. The sacred halls of Olympus have been breached. Brothers, in the end, he will suffer. In the end, we will triumph. In the end, there will be only chaos. Of course, we're looking forward to what Kratos will bring to PS3, and this next title is a product we debuted here last year. Developed by Sucker Punch, the team that brought you one of the last generation's most popular franchises, Sly Cooper, Infamous brings a unique look and feel and experience to every one of their products. They have mastered the ability to create open, reactive, and incredibly detailed world that allows players the freedom to play the way they want to play. With Infamous, you roam an open world as a superhero, putting you in a position to save what's left of a failing society. You must make choices between being a hero or an anti-hero, and it's up to you to ultimately save or destroy the entire city. 
Let's take a look at Infamous. It took us all by surprise. Initial blast ripped through a six block radius, vaporizing everyone in its path. Everyone except me. While outside the city fell apart. But inside, inside me, something was beginning. A force I'm learning to control. But the question still remains. Why did I survive? Do I fight the darkness I unleashed? Or be consumed by it? got one final title we'd like to talk about. You've all seen multiplayer online games, you've all played massively multiplayer online games, but you've never seen a massive action online game like this. It's my pleasure to introduce you to a brand new title we're working on, and this is a workout even for the PS3 architecture. It's not remotely possible anywhere else. And as you've seen, we're focused on pushing the hardware and online capabilities, and we're looking forward to setting the bar for games in the, the games and development community. There's nothing like it on the market today. I'd like to invite Andy Bodwin from Zipper Interactive to talk to you about it. Good afternoon. I'm excited to be here today to tell you a little bit about what we've been working on up at Zipper. Now, a couple of years ago, when we joined the Sony Computer Entertainment team, we were given a very unique opportunity to create a new multiplayer experience for the PlayStation 3. So building on the studio's history of multiplayer success with the SOCOM series, and leveraging strong studio support from Sony, we began work on MAG. MAG is a new IP from Zipper that will immerse players in massive online battles of a scale never before seen on the consoles. Just how massive? MAG will support battles of up to 256 players. With big moments, such as large-scale airborne drops, helo insertions, and multi-front assaults, MAG will deliver a sweeping battle experience using only real players. Now, with so many players in the battlefield, organizing the action is critical. Teams will be broken down into eight-player squads, each led by players who have themselves proven to be strong leaders. Now, this creates a very unique experience. It's the tactical feel of a small-scale, squad-based shooter combined with the climactic intensity of massive battles. So while 256-player battles and MAG's command system provide the visceral elements of gameplay, character growth and faction campaigns provide players with long-term goals. The character advancement tree in MAG allows players to fine-tune their soldiers to match their unique playing styles. The MAG also features ongoing faction-based campaigns which provides strong incentives for players to check into the game on a daily basis. So by combining groundbreaking large-scale combat and the intimacy of eight-man squad combat with character growth and ongoing campaigns, MAG will deliver an intense and long-lasting shooter experience unique to the PlayStation 3. So now, on behalf of Zipper Interactive, I'm very thrilled to give you this first glimpse into the MAG experience. <laughs>
Thanks so much, Andy, for introducing MAG to us today. It's hard to imagine that all of this come, could have come out of a meeting in a Sony Computer Entertainment conference room 15 years ago this week. But Sony changed the rules and introduced the 10-year product life cycle to the industry. Given what we've shown you today, if this is what year two of the PlayStation 3 life cycle looks like, imagine years three and beyond. We encourage you all to come and experience these games in our press lounge and showcase pavilion. And I want to personally thank you for all your kind enthusiasm and attention. And I look forward to speaking with many of you over the course of the week. Thanks again. Take care.